So this is a question I get quite frequently and it's actually a very valid question because maybe what deters people from building an ICF home is the assumption that it's substantially more than conventional methods. And so there's a few ways that you can look at the situation and I'll go through it from a practical point of view and I'll go through it from what I experience in my industry, in my area. And then I'll just go through a couple scenarios. So I'll get you the facts right away here. And then as the video progresses, we'll go a little more into detail. So the way I think about it is, and when I've done the math, when I've calculated, okay, I've estimated this house, and then I estimated it in ICF, the total cost is five to 7% more for the whole build, okay? So when you think about it this way, no matter what you do, you're gonna need a foundation no matter what. So whether that's conventional or ICF, that's another debate for another, another day to see which one of those is more, but you still need a foundation, you still need a kitchen, bathrooms, laundry room, drywall, a roof, shingles, everything. So everything in the house is the exact same for a conventional, whereas an ICF build, the only really difference, now if you're talking maybe a bungalow, is you're changing the exterior walls above grade or above your floor. So for an ICF, you're just an ICF exterior above the floor versus wood frame. And that's the only difference. So on a whole entire build, that's five to 7%. So here's a question I have for you is, if you know some of the characteristics about ICF and we'll cover just the, the highlights right now, is 5%, five to 7% more in added cost worth the added value? You get a building that's disaster proof, sound proof, you have 40% more insulation, so we'll get into more of the details near the end of the video. Continuous insulation, no thermal bridging. It's 800% stronger than a two by six wall and 1000% more airtight. So I'll give you some examples too. So is that worth more than five to 7%? So I think that's an easy question to answer, but I wanna give you the facts. That's what it is. It's hard to do math, because if you wanna do an estimate on a whole conventional build and then an estimate on a whole ICF build, that takes a lot of time and effort. So take it from me, there's not much difference, like I said, just the main floor exterior walls. So in my neighborhood, or my area, I'm actually right on par with all the custom guys. So all the custom guys around our area are still doing wood frame construction. They're doing conventional basements, all the rest. But when I just word of mouth and what you hear and oh, how much is it to build this type of house? We're right in the same ballpark. So whatever difference that is, I don't know. But um, at the end of the day, I'm building a far superior product for the same amount of money. But on paper, it's five to 7% more. So here's a couple things I want you to think about or be aware of. Now, if you're building a conventional building, but you wanna add extra R value, or you wanna try to bridge the gap on efficiency, you try, wanna try to get a little closer to what ICF can offer. So let's say you throw spray foam at it, or you throw extra steps or extra labor in maybe doing an outside layer of insulation to stop some of the thermal bridging that wood does. And what happens there is all of a sudden you've taken that five to 7% gap and you've bridged that down to now just a couple of percent, right? Cause spray foam is quite expensive. And I have other videos where I compare the cost of ICF versus a, a two by six wall with spray foam. And like I said, you're just bridging that gap difference. There's hardly any difference, but you don't gain all the benefits that you would if just went ICF right all the way through. Now, another thing that I want to mention is the fact that if you're talking to, let's say a production builder or a cookie cutter or somebody who's just, their typical building is conventionally built. If you ask them, hey, how much to build an ICF? They're either gonna A, not know much about it, or B, they're just gonna throw a ridiculous price at it because they think, oh man, this is a premium product. So we get to charge a premium price for this. So you want to try to be at least cautious of those situations. If it's not someone who's typically in that industry, 
they're gonna charge a premium. So, but if you go to a builder who's, that's more of their day to day, it shouldn't cost that much more. So a year ago, a guy that we know I drive by his house all the time, his shop blew down a 60 by 100, two by eight wall with 18 foot high walls. A big plow wind came through, blew his overhead door in, and just literally punched out the south wall and his shop fell down. Now, I, when I was driving by, I was thinking to myself, well, maybe you should build with ICF next time. But what's funny is he actually called me and wanted a price. So for insurance, I had to give him a price on a two by eight shop and the ICF shop. Now, because for multiple reasons, the customer didn't want to top up the difference and blah, 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 and the insurance company kind of dwindled them down to nothing, we didn't go with the, the ICF shop. But my numbers showed that an ICF shop was 20% more than a two by eight wall shop. Now the that reason why that percentage is more than let's say a house comparison is because for a shop, you're just literally exterior walls and a roof. So there's no other materials or other costs to offset or help bring that average down. Whereas as a house, like I said earlier, you have all those like the kitchen, the flooring and all the finishing that helps bring the average down. But if you're just comparing a shop, simple exterior walls and a roof, ICF versus conventional, you're about 20% more. As per promise, we're gonna get a little more into the details and show you that I'm not full of BS, like basically back up my earlier statements. So the extra R value, if you, well, and what they, what they take into consideration now is when you take a two by six wall, rather than thinking, oh, that's an R20 wall, they actually use the brain and realize that all that lumber and all the headers and all the material that actually composes that wall, they take an effective R value, which is the average of all the components in that wall. So all those studs, all the headers, everything's a thermal break or a th it's thermal bridging. So that the average is actually more like an R16 or 17. It all depends on if you get your just your two foot centers just right and you have little amount of headers and you're not very much thermal bridging, then you know you might get that number crept up a little bit. But with an ICF, you have an R24 on paper. That's exactly what it is. It's actually more than that because they don't take in consideration the thermal mass component of the concrete because that's not in the R value calculation. So you easily have 40% more insulation. It's continuous because of the foam all the way around the outside and your concrete core and the foam on the inside. So you have no thermal bridging, continuous insulation. Now, as for the strength, it's 800% stronger or it's just simply eight times stronger than a two by six. So there's videos that I've seen where uh, disaster goes through a whole neighborhood and the only house left is the ICF house standing there, right? So that's just pretty easy to understand. And then in back to the air tightness, how I said we're, we're a thousand percent more airtight or 10 times more, more, yeah, more airtight. What, what information I have there to back that up is we recently just completed an, a blower door test on one of our houses and it came in at a 0.23 air exchange per hour. So what that means is the natural leakage of that house, you take the total volume of, so that house was 37,200 cubic feet of air. We only lost that much air per hour was only 0.23 of the total 37,000. So I think it was 85, 90 cubic feet. So on the blower door test, we were losing 143 cubic feet per minute. Now in our industry, in the wood guys, conventional guys, building a house today, the average air exchange per hour is 2.5 to 3.5 air exchanges per hour. So if you take a house, let's give them a little credit and they did a decent job, two and a half air exchanges, well, we were 0.23, so that's 10 times more airtight. And if you think about the math a little bit is you're heating all of that air but if you're losing that much air, then you're reheating it, reheating it, right? So if you have a 2.5 air exchange on 37,000 cubic feet, what is that? It's 100, about 100,000 cubic feet per hour, whereas we were losing right around the, the 8,600. So just keep that in mind as well. I got a little backup here, I'm not full of BS. So at the end of the day, maybe, I don't know who you wanna to talk to to confirm the numbers, but ICF isn't as much as you think it is. 
the, the benefits far outweigh the costs. I hope that helps you guys make a better educated decision and thanks for tuning in.